what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1999 BMW 328i. Up front is a 2.8 liter inline six and down below is a five speed manual transmission and up above I have no roof. So that is why I'm excited to be driving this car today because I've somehow struck a 60 degree day here in February in Chicagoland, which is rarer than a unicorn. And so I get to pleasantly enjoy all of the things that the E36 has to offer in convertible format, which is... Oh, so good. <laughs> But if you'd like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. I hope it's as lovely as this E36 convertible. But let's get back to that 2.8 liter under the hood. Well, this is known as an E36. That's the chassis code assigned to this generation of 3 Series. And there was a lot of engines offered. They had vehicles like the 318 that came with a four cylinder and you could get a bunch of different six cylinders ranging from 2.5 liter all the way up, of course, to the M3, which had a 3.2. I think the 2.8 is a really good middle ground because it still has a lot more torque than the four cylinder options, but is most certainly more affordable than any M3 that you can buy. So it's a nice middle ground and a happy medium. It makes high 190 horsepower-ish, so don't expect to put down any land speed records, but it's still a very enjoyable drive. Now, like I said, paired to it is a five-speed manual transmission. Love the shifting feel of these older BMWs. Modern BMW, I don't think their manual transmissions are very good, but back in this era, they were mwah, lovely. And so that is what I'm experiencing here today. Shifter feels great, really notchy. You know it's going into gear. Clutch is decently light. It's not too heavy. It's a little hesitant, feels a little rubber bandy at times, but I think that's also just part of the age of the car. Last but not least, of course, the 328 convertible is rear wheel drive. So how does it feel to drive the 328? Well, it's just one of those cars that start to feel like a second skin the more you drive it. Everything is bang on. The shifting feels great. The throttle response is wonderful. The steering is stiff but accurate. And the sound, well, the sound ain't too shabby either. But with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. And on the left, I have my fuel and speedometer. And off to the right, I have my tachometer and coolant temperature. I've always loved the E36's gauge cluster. I think it's very clean, very concise, and I know exactly what I'm looking at at the glance of an eye. On the steering wheel, I don't actually have any forward-facing buttons, which is kind of nice, clean, and simple very focused on driving. And off to the left, we have a little climate control vent, headlight switches, and our fog lights. Moving out of the door, we have two speakers for our Harman Kardon sound system. Yes, they were doing that back in 99, as well as our power mirror switch. Moving into the center, we get the giant, iconic E36 climate vent, our BMW business CD and cassette player, as well as our climate controls, which do have dual zone climate, However, there's no way to balance or sync the dual zone. So if your passenger is set to cold and you want it to be hot, you gotta just go all the way up until they match. Kind of weird. Then we do have a little information center that will give me like outside temperature, check, clock date, things like that. Very, very simple there. Little cubby. And then we do have our cigarette lighter, heated seat options, and our power folding top options, as well as ASC. Then we have the shifter. Love the shifter, love how it looks and feels, as well as we do have the central locking and windows found all around. Then we have the hazard switch and we do have a cup holder, so we will do a big friggin' bottle test in the E36 convertible. But like every other E36 that I've ever tested in the history of the world, it also fails. <laughs> Then we have an ashtray that perfectly fits a garage door opener and another cup holder at the back that also fails the big friggin' bottle test. The seats are comfortable. Like I said, they are power and heated, which are very nice options here for $19.99. Didn't get a whole lot of heated seats in this era, and so it's very, very nice to see that here. However, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. So luckily, uh, the Cosmos are my headliner today, and so I can actually get into it 
once I'm back here, first of all, these seats are way higher than the front seats. I can't even get this thing to click with my knees still existing. This is not a good back seat. If you have kids, sure. Um, if you hang out with a lot of Oompa Loompas or elves, sure. Um, but those people don't tend to run in my posse. Um, trying to watch my weight so Oompa Loompas are out. And, and elves bring a lot of chocolate too. So they're just not usually in my squad. So this wouldn't be a good car uh, for my friend group. Um, but I'm back here. I mean, what more can you want from me? Let's take a brief look at the trunk, then we'll talk about the looks, and then we'll get back to driving this car, because that is really what I want to be doing. All right, so around the back of the 328i, big chunky button, pull up, and here we are in the trunk. This is the six disc CD changer. Very common for these to break. They pop down like that, um, but as soon as I hit a bump, it's gonna fall right back down. We do also get the BMW toolkit. Now this particular one is missing a majority, which is pretty common for these cars, but they used to come with tool kits that would have like screwdrivers and wrenches and things like that. Um, so you could actually work on the car yourself. Modern BMW doesn't even give you a dipstick. So very fun to see that little jog back in time. But overall, nothing really too crazy in the back of the E36 convertible, but here it is in case you were curious. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I think the BMW E36 chassis as a whole really has timeless looks. I think it's wonderfully designed. I think it's simple. I think it's subtle. And although I'm sure it was pretty when it came out, I think it's actually almost prettier here today. That is a wonderful spot to be in, in terms of automotive design. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a convertible BMW 328i? Well, this is nothing new for me. I have driven now nearly every single configuration of this generation of three series. Name a body style that it came in, I'm pretty sure I've driven it. So why would I wanna drive another? Why would I waste my time driving another BMW? Well, the simple answer is that I use this vehicle and I use this video as a palate cleanser. You see, in my line of work, I drive between seven and 10 cars a week. Oftentimes, modern cars with EVs and hybrids and very numb steering, numb throttles, self-driving, massage seat vehicles. And I like them, I love them too. But sometimes my head can get away from myself and I start to forget what cars used to drive like, what cars in their peak era used to be. And so getting into this car is like hitting a big fat reset button on my automotive knowledge. Call this top-down therapy, if you will. Once again, it is just so fantastic, so lovely. Because this is the best era of cars. I'm sorry, the 1980s and 1990s, for me personally, are my favorite era. Because they're modern enough to be daily driven and I can drive around right now and be comfortable and luxurious and nice. I have modern amenities like power steering, but I still feel something. It's that very brief window of cars before everything was just so computerized. And like I said, I love modern cars. I own one, I drive them all the time, but there's just something simple about this car. It's complex enough, but simple enough. It's like a slice of New York style cheesecake. Graham cracker crust and a little bit of cheese and sugar. Now, it wasn't what the Mesopotamians were eating, and it's not the most modern thing in the world, but it's good and it works. And that's what I love, man. I love this car wholeheartedly and I love E36s wholeheartedly. They are just delightful, delightful machines. And if you're contemplating, if you can't afford the M3, that's fine. This to me is just as fun as any M3 I've ever driven. And with the top down. Oh. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Huge thank you to Andre for letting me take out his BMW 328i convertible. He has his own YouTube channel where he updates you on all of his cool and fun cars. He's always picking up buying something fun and different. He's been a longtime friend of the channel and I sincerely thank him very, very much. But I hope you guys enjoy.
Um, well, not the first time that that's happened in an E36 for me, unfortunately, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys' shift knobs stay on. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.